Hi everybody, welcome back to Higher Hertz. I'm Justin Leopard, your online cello teacher here with our series of lessons for beginner cellists. And today I wanna to talk about something relatively simple but absolutely crucial to being able to play the cello, which is getting it in tune. Um, if you get your instrument from a luthier or someone qualified, bring it home from the shop, you know, you, you shouldn't really have any major problems as far as big tuning with the pegs, but we are gonna go over that. And no matter what, there's gonna be some fluctuations in the pitch of your instrument from changes in humidity or temperature or getting, you know, jostled just a little bit. And so you're always gonna have to do some fine adjustment with the fine tuners down here on the cello as well. So we're gonna talk about how to listen big picture to notes, how to listen small picture to notes, and I'm gonna discuss two different ways to do it. One using a piano and one using a tuner. So for this video, um, and just talking about how to find the notes you're on in order to tune up and use the pegs. I've uh, detuned my A string significantly. And I have a piano in front of me here. So what we're basically just gonna do is, you don't have to know piano, we're just gonna try to find this note. And uh, the website that I'm on, virtualpiano.net, um, will tell you the note that you hit. So that's useful. Even if you don't know piano, we're gonna know what note it is. And we know that the strings are A, B, G, C, because it's ants digging in the dirt, digging in the ground, all the way to China. And it's just really good to have those memorized, of course. You're gonna be using those a lot. Um, you need to know what the names of the strings are. So the top string is the A string. That's what we're gonna to have to get up to. But first we have to find out what note we're on. So what I'm just gonna do on the piano here is uh, scroll up and we're just gonna find the note that matches. kind of in between the D and the, uh, the E flat. And you can see the, uh, the pitches on the screen there. It says D sharp instead of E flat. They are actually the same note, just a different name. So we're trying to get uh, up to A. So we'll have to know where A is. Maybe you already know uh, that A is going to be the, the higher, the further right of the white keys in between the groups of three black keys on a piano. But we also have A there, so you're able to press around and try to find the A. This is A4. Oh yes, okay, great. So we're gonna have to tune up to this pitch. So the way we do this is we just make sure to keep referencing it and tune up slowly. From a technical perspective, what this looks like is it helps to turn the cello around. Um, and if you watch our stringing up a video, you'll, you'll see this in, in greater detail, but we're gonna push in as we turn. Okay, so have that ringing in the ear. Just go up like one note at a time. You know, are we there yet? Not quiet. Oh, it's one away. Oh, and it slipped on me. So this is where it's really important to push in as you turn. All right, so that's the right note. But there's also intonation in, in between the notes. So what we need to be able to also listen for is what are the minute differences in different tunings? So I'll, I'll show you with, by using the fine tuner to adjust this. If, I'm, if I rotate the fine tuner to the left, so making it flatter, one whole turn versus up. That is a different note. You know, it's a, not a different pitch in our 12-tone system in Western music, but it's certainly a different frequency. And the ear is extremely, extremely sensitive to these different frequencies. If you're tuned by even a hundredth of a pitch, uh, known as a scent, off, you can, uh, you can discern that. So let's go up. Right, so they're, they're like different shades, if you will. They're like the same color, but a different shade. And it can be tricky to figure out which uh, direction you need to go in order to really match the sound you're hearing. And of course, we're also having to make a timbral adjustment for the fact that we're listening to piano. 
So if we're not sure, and uh, maybe you're not sure if that's in tune or not, what helps is to bring it flat. So let's just make this flatter and see if that helped or not. Okay, so it didn't help, but um, it's it's clear to my ear and hope and, and perhaps to yours that it's um, flat now. So whatever it was before, it's it's flat now. So let's just let's kind of inch our way up. Does that work? So you can actually hear a little bit of discrepancy in the pitch, and this is a lot more apparent live in the room as you're as you're working with it. Um, when you listen for that little wobbling, that is not in tune. Intonation is when waveforms are completely lined up. So we're listening for a congruence, almost even for the piano note to fade into the cello note. So let's just go a little sharper, which is to say a little bit tighter, righty tighty on the fine tuner peg. So really try to listen for it to ring out. All right, try going up a little sharper. And if you're not sure, you know, you can play it back. And I think playing it faster, it's clear that they're still not quite together. So just going to go up a little bit more. Well, that's very close, right? And again, playing it faster, you can hear the discrepancy clear. All right, maybe we're finally there. Oh, it's so close. And that is extremely close. I can play those really close to back. Oh, it's still a little off. And you can hear those are the same pitch now. So we would go through this process, uh, either going through the subsequent notes, so we could, we could do D the same way. It's also good to work on hearing the fifth of the strings together. This can also be clear with the bow, but, um, over time, you'll develop an ear for the intonation of the fifths, and then you'll only need the reference of an A to be able to quickly tune the other strings. But we can keep going quickly here. And then sometimes when you're done tuning, you just have to quickly check. It can change the tension of the peg box and uh, slightly the angle of the bridge. So yeah, so now we're a little too sharp. All right, excellent. So usually you shouldn't have to do more than two times through the notes um, in order to kind of balance out the, the instrument that way, but you do have to kind of quickly go back over and, and do a second tuning if you really want to be in tune. <coughs> so if you don't have a piano at home, if you don't like using the piano, if you're just intimidated by the piano, the reasons why I like using the piano are that uh, everyone has one in a home, uh, I'm actually using my ear to tell that I am exactly in tune um, because sometimes with a, with a needle, you can't, you're not hearing so much as seen, which is not what music is. And your eyes not as acute as your ear is. Um, and then the other thing is that it's just good to get to know what the notes are on a piano because piano is just one of the most ubiquitous things in music. One of the clearest ways along with the grand staff of being able to show where different notes are. But I do have this other website pulled up. And this website is going to show us what our pitch is. So let's see how close we are based off this needle compared to the other site. All right, so we're not just in tune, we're very in tune because the A that we tune to is uh, A440. The cello A is actually an octave below that. The orchestra tunes to A440, violins A's are A440, a cello is an octave lower, so it's going to be half as much as that, A220. And if you look, we have A220 and a third. All right, now it's snuck up a little bit. So if we're using this, we might think, okay, we're a little bit sharp. But one thing to remember is the harder you pluck, the sharper it's going to go compared to... Well, anyways, it thinks we're sharp.
Of course, the clear advantage of using this is that it's gonna detect and tell you what the note is. You get this little needle, you get the dopamine satisfaction of seeing it turned green, but of course, it's not quite as precise. You can tune with a tuner and think you're in tune, and um, it's mostly not in tune. And especially because with cello, we're not dealing with frets, we're actually dealing with having to listen. And it's not even just muscle memory the way people talk about, because if your hand's at a different angle or you're using a different amount of flesh on the string, it's gonna change the, uh, the intonation even at the same location on the, uh, the fingerboard. So truly training our ears is the most important part. But if this method helps get your cello tuned up in order to start practicing at all, then absolutely it's the best way to start tuning for now. But try to uh, find ways of tuning that really use your ear and really challenge yourself to listen uh, as opposed to looking when you're tuning your cello. It's a really hard part of playing the cello, but of course, it's an essential part of playing the cello. And although a lot of the notes you play, you could theoretically adjust and not have to actually play in, you know, with the strings in tune, it's just gonna mess you up. The open strings won't be in tune. So, uh, and at the very least, you're training your ear to listen for it. So hopefully this was helpful for all of those things. Stay subscribed below, higher hertz for more cello lesson videos. Once more, I'm Justin Leppard, and you can find my stuff on Vagabond Cellist. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.